The following program is sponsored by PokerStars.net. Last night on the big game, Bill Locke played almost half the hands dealt. 18-4, 31, 11 to 42. And continued to run good. Jack, no good. Ah, oh, miserable. While our loose cannon Courtney G's rocky approach of only playing big starting hands wasn't working out. Chris, 48. He looked like he was annoyed that he just raised you right there. <laughs> like it was personal. Against the table of high rollers, can our cannon throw numbers? Find out tonight on The Big Game. Boom. Lock it in. I had it. Hello and welcome to The Big Game from Las Vegas, Nevada, alongside Joe Stapleton. I'm Scott Huff. Tonight there's almost $850,000 in cash on the table as some of the top players in the world have come to battle it out in our state-of-the-art poker room. One of last season's big winners, I lock it a lot. Phil Locke, the Unabomber, is so far up 27-7. Oh my God, they did not kill Kenny. He's come on down to The Big Game and he's having himself a time. He's up over 18 dimes. Randy Liu is known as one of the fastest online players in the world, but the poker police needs to pull this guy over. He's hemorrhaging over 82,000. Wealthy amateur and Hollywood home game legend Rick Solomon is seeing bad box office receipts. He's now down 10K. Our loose cannon is 24-year-old Courtney G. Williker. She's been playing tight. She's got a two-year plan to be a professional poker player, but she's down over five grand so far, and her time on the big game is almost halfway done. Our remaining player is Canadian poker superstar Daniel Negreanu. And right now, Kid Poker is standing by with Amanda Leatherman. Daniel, what do you think of the table so far? I think we've had some crazy action. You know, not surprising to me, yeah. but Randy Lou's been super aggressive. These guys are probably thinking, oh, you know, he's got the look of like a quiet, you know, innocent kid. He's an yeah. animal. He's an absolute maniac. Are you scared of him? No, not, it's, not here. Online, I'm absolutely scared of him because he's like super fast and, you know, keeps me guessing. But here, I feel like, you know, this is my comfort zone. With three shows to go, do you think Courtney's gonna mix it up a little bit more? Yeah, I think she's playing perfectly so far. You know, she's just biding her time, and then if she gets stuck a little bit, I guarantee she's gonna start mixing it up. She okay. knows what she's doing. I think she really has a good game plan. All right, good luck. Thanks. Here are the loose cannon rules. Each cannon is staked $100,000 to play. They keep all winnings above the initial 100K, and the loose cannon who's won the most money at season's end earns a North American Poker Tour passport worth $50,000. Right now, the leading loose cannon to beat is Gonzalez Cannon. And again, yes, that's his real name. And all I have to say is talk to Chris Moneymaker. Rick Solomon's put out a sleeper straddle, which becomes live if no one raises before it gets to him. Action will start on Randy Lou. Folds. Big sleeper straddle to 2K this time. Action on the cannon. Is that a 2K straddle? Now we're talking. <laughs> Folds. Did you really do that? You are sick, kid. Wow. Queen three for Daniel. Raises to 4,000. Oh, I like this. Daniel's in position trying to isolate Rick, who plays huge, but is still an amateur. Lock folds. Ace-queen for Kenny. Makes the call. Solomon's getting ridiculous pot odds. And calls 2,000 with king-8. So we'll have three-way action to the flop. Look at Bryn Kenny. He doesn't care. He's a baller. 5-4-5 five, five, rainbow. Kenny checks. Solomon checks. Daniel going for some chips. And bets 6,000. Kenny's got the best hand with ace-queen high. And he's in there. Solomon folds. Daniel's drawing very thin. Eight of spades on the turn. Rick would have paired his eight. And Kenny checks. Daniel, raise pre-flop, bet the flop. Let's see if he continues here on the turn. I'm always blabbing on and on about the power of position. Maybe Daniel will use it. And he does, bets two thirds of the pot. This is actually a pretty big bet from Daniel. Bryn looks suspicious and we know he'd be right. Daniel was raising Rick's straddle in position so his range is very wide. But the counter to that is that this board does hit a lot of the hands Daniel likes to play. And Bryn's way behind, even to a combo draw.
He's gonna make the call. Don't look now, but our first pot of the night is getting pretty big. To the river. Deuce of hearts, big brick. And Kenny checks. We don't see a three barrel bluff from Daniel too often. Bryn's been pretty stubborn. I'm not even sure one would work. But Daniel does three barrel, 85,000. That deuce didn't really bring in a lot of draws. If Kenny thought he was good on the turn, he might be able to make this call still, but that's a pretty sick bet. Not only does Daniel not three barrel very often, but I can't remember the last time I saw him over bet the river on a bluff. Kenny folds. <laughs> that's one of those, right, Phil? That was fun to watch. Not so fun for Kenny. Maybe it was. Let's see it then. You want to see it? You don't want to see it. It'll tilt you, I for sure. Let's see. Let's see. I want to see on. it then. You guys really want to see? Make yeah. it even better. All right, show one for the boys. Come on. Let's do it. Nice. Let's see. Eh, what the hell? Ah, oh, that's like looking at an ex's Facebook page. Don't do it. So while Bryn Kenny contemplates Daniel's bluff, we'll show you the rules of the big game. Each table lasts exactly 150 hands. The action pre-flop is pot limit and becomes no limit after the flop. Blinds are two and 400 with a $100 ante, all of which is paid by the player on the button. And every player begins with at least 100K, but can rebuy for up to 500,000. The big rule change this season is that a winning loose cannon cannot come back after they've played their week's 150 hands. Now the straddle's on, and the action's going to start with the loose cannon. Nine, eight. Let's it go. Yes. How much is that? Eight, eight straddle this time. Ten nine of diamonds for Daniel. I always have to, you know, double check. Raises to 2,500. Solomon. <laughs> Kenny folds. Lose out. I'm gonna win this one. Four tray suited for Solomon, and he calls. That's what they call a three barrel bluff, right? That's <laughs> what they call it. Hey, by the way, when you do the video on yeah. three barrel bluffs. Three barrel bluffs. That's gonna be Here's an example video. of a three barrel bluff. <laughs> to the flop, seven five deuce, and Solomon's flopped an up and down straight flush draw. Check. Checks it. Solomon attempting a check raise. We'll have to see if Daniel C bets. Oh, check as well. Ah, check raise fail. <laughs> Jack of spades on the turn. Now Daniel has a gut shot. Solomon fires out 6,000. 6,000? They let the movie Betting six? They do whatever they want. Rick's not giving Daniel the chance to check behind again, and by betting, maybe Daniel folds, and if not, at least you're building your own odds. Daniel calls. Daniel certainly can't fold now that he's picked up a gut shot. It's Daniel. He hates folding more than he hates meat and dairy products. Rivers the three of hearts. Check. A couple of straight draws came in, but clubs missed. So if Daniel was floating the turn to try to take this away, this is a decent card to attempt it with. Daniel fires. Oh, man. Why didn't you bet the freaking flop? Why didn't I bet the flop? Yeah. I didn't have anything on the flop. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Such a bummer. Because I had three, four clubs. I'm gonna... Oh, you had three, four clubs. So you were ready to just... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to dump all my money in there for sure. <laughs> 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 now I got a pair and I got to make a decision. <laughs> sort of sucks. <laughs> sort of sucks? <laughs> How much is it? 12,200? Yeah, I think you got a jack for some reason. Can Rick snap off the bluff? No. Yeah, while well, I'm bluffing, I might as well just keep doing it, right? Oh, <laughs> until, yeah. until they call eventually. Okay, okay, okay. Kid, you're just gonna own this table, huh? Just you are bluffing. just gonna <laughs> pound until we just hold on with ace high. <laughs> Damn, right. just keep, I'm in bluff mode. I hit a pair and didn't call, what a bad player. Don't beat yourself up, Rick. You're still a millionaire playboy. Back-to-back -back bluffs for Daniel, and he's poning the table so far tonight. Coming back with more big time action, don't go away. Welcome back to Las Vegas and the big game, where 24 year old loose cannon Courtney G has been staked 100,000 G's to pursue her ambition of becoming a poker pro. Being on the big game is a huge, huge opportunity for me. I know that if I could do well, if I can win, the passport so if I can make a lot of money in the big game that's a huge stepping stone for me and it's a great opportunity to achieve what I've been dreaming of all this time to be a real poker player 
My strategy for the big game is definitely to use the fact that I'm a female and the fact that females are typically known to be really passive players. My strategy is to use that in my favor at the start and then I do want to be aggressive and to also not be scared money. I don't want to be that stereotypical woman who is afraid to be in big pots and who is afraid to play. I'm not going to be that. Some might say Courtney hasn't exactly been walking the walk, but I'm going to go ahead and give her the benefit of the doubt and just say she's being incredibly patient. <laughs> <laughs> Negrano and Locke quickly out over to Bryn Kenny, folds to the fastest man on the internet, Randy Liu, 7-9 offsuit. He's got the button and he raises to 1,400. Rick Solomon, 7-5, out. All right, let's see the Courtney from that feature. Ace Jack. I'll call. She's going to call. All right, that's a start. <laughs> Randy Liu goes by Nano Noko online, known to play 24 tables at a time. Only heads up here, though. Six, ace, six, two clubs, G pairs are ace. Nothing wrong with a check here. Check. And she does. 22. And Liu bets 2,200. Okay, I'm going to assume Courtney's contemplating call, raise, and not call, fold. This is an auto call, and rarely is it a raise. Really tough to get called by worse. I'll call. She calls. All right, we're cooking with gas now. Courtney's done a good job of checking to the razor. Randy's a lot more likely to bet than he is to call a bet from Courtney. Turn. Ace of hearts, full boat for Courtney. Check. Checks it. Check. And Nano checks. See, that's another problem with playing so tight. Four diamonds. You might not get any action when you want it. I check. Check. Got a nine. I have an ace. Courtney's full house is going to win. Sorry. Did you say you have a nine? Yeah. Oh, I was like, you're proud of that nine. So you were checking, hoping for your buddy to bet, or you were just being nice? I think being nice. She was not being yeah. nice. <laughs> well, she knows she's not getting called by the it was old. A good play. Yeah. So Randy Liu does not opt to take a stab at that pot, and the LC takes this one down. And so far tonight, when it's come to showing the winner, the internet phenom is getting crushed at just 17%, while our canon Courtney G has had the winner every time she's turned her cards over. But if she wants to get back in the race for the NAPT passport or even walk out of here with one red cent, she's going to have to play some bigger pots. By the way, she loves board games. See? See? Amanda was guessing. She's like, okay, so she doesn't like movies. She doesn't like TV. She, she probably likes games. Loves she's games. not fun, so she must be geeky. No, not you. No, I didn't say that. I'm geeky. I'm a stats geek, like big time. Oh, I'm totally geeky. I'm proud you of You are it. geeky? It's okay. Geek, geeks yeah. are us. Yeah. The geeks didn't know that they were on the same page. They lost track of things for a second. Wait, no, oh, I'm okay, geeky. Good. You're geeky. No, I'm so geeky. Lock raises to 800. They were singing in the same choir and didn't even know it. Action folds to Solomon. Oh, Muffin's playing. I can see it. How geeky was that high five? I think Daniel's pocket protector broke. Solomon re-raises his pocket eights to 3,000. Over to the cannon. Ace Jack. This is a spot where you can make an argument for four betting or folding. How much? Like 31,000 or something. That is 3,000 total. Out of position, you don't want to call, but I imagine a four bet would get a lot of respect. Then again, Rick hasn't three bet a ton. She's going to let it go. So you raised or straddled? He don't straddle. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> he only comes after the straddle. <laughs> he gets excited when he sees him. And the Grano's out. How much do I owe this pot? Three game? Three K? All right, sir. Gamble. Good luck to both of us. Locke makes a fairly loose call out of position, but thinks he has an edge against his amateur buddy. Seven, six, four. Locke's got two pairs. Solomon with an over pair. I checked the sick one. Pretty gross flop for Rick. 5,000. I raised the sick one. Great spot for a check raise. Locke raises two. 12,200. How much is that? The board is super wet, so Phil can make this look like a draw. You don't have to call, sir. You can just let it go. And there are a lot of action killers that could hit the turn. Solomon calls. What are you doing, kid? Rick's also got outs to a gut shot. Rick Solomon, what are you doing? Rick, what do you want, kid? Tell me what you want. <laughs> you want a specific card, kid? I should just shut up, I think. Turns the three of spades. And there's the action killer. How much more do you have, son? 60K. 63,000. Despite the potential action killer, something tells me these guys like to gamble with each other. 
I'm going to bet 42,400. Because that's a good number. And I've used it in the past. There's no time to use the things we've learned from the past. I'm all in. Solomon's all in. Wow. Wow, wow, wee, wow. <laughs> How much more is it? Get six and a half to one. <laughs> How much more? That's... <laughs> this is a great show. <laughs> I think I'm going broke. Phil might think Rick's got a five, but he can't fold. It's 21 more? That's it? 21,100. Almost as if the gods have decided to torture me. Keep it nice and small. Wow. All right, give me four yellows. Lock calls Rick's all in. Rick Solomon, want to run it three times? See what you got. <laughs> well, I, I got a kind of hand where running it three times would be fun for me. Well, you show me your hand, I'll talk about it. Will you show me yours? Yeah, I promise you. I got two pair. Oh, you're good. OK, great. Now you want to run it three, three times. times. Yeah, three, three times. Three times, buddy. How about four times, but the third time doesn't count? <laughs> nice hand. Three times, Or just right? three times? Yeah, three times. No fives! We're going to see three rivers three with the winner taking a third of the pot each time. I won't be happy with that. I mean, you have to get an eight or a five, <laughs> you know? Phil wins it twice? Uh, I yeah. don't know math. Yes, you do. It has to I be. Can tell you That's the most likely. Seconds. You're the most likely. The, the most likely thing to happen is you win two out of three. Has to be. That has to be the case. It's more likely than him winning two out of three. You can just, and more likely than you winning three at... Huh? No, I mean, yeah, he's favorite, so oh. he's got to be at least Now with all that three. talk, they've jinxed it. You're winning both or one for sure. All this fills <laughs> a favorite. How can he lose it? Oh, yeah. He needs five, four, three, eight, yeah? I don't think I'm winning any. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to win one. Fills the favorite as we see the first river. King of spades. And Locke wins a third of the pot. I symbolically want to show what's going on. This is mine. No matter what comes, at least I got one. That's you. Power card, too. It's a king. It's a good high card for strength, you know, to meditate on strength. If it comes, I'm going to be strong. We can take it. Shit, it's going to happen. OK, bring it out already. Statistically, Rick should win at least one of these. River number two, ten of spades. That's two. OK, we got to give one. Lock wins again. Solomon. This wouldn't be fair. I'm not getting any. I just want to, you know. Be near you if it comes, and be near you if it doesn't come. Oh, That's eight. the right idea. Yeah, look at that. It's even 40% of a straight flush right here forming. So there's power strength. But I'm still OK if I lose, because you don't Can always make Can get the misery over with it? <laughs> yeah, <for laughs> <sure>. <laughs> oh, can Phil Locke go three for three? Yes, he can. Ten of diamonds on the river. He scoops. I'm buying him for 50. Nice, yeah. And he wins almost $160,000. Locke, how do you do it? How does he do it? I dumped it to him. Yeah, push him on. Oh. Meanwhile, Rick's been forced to reload, adding on another 50. Now into the game for 150,000. A little short buy for the man in the hat. Looks like a good bluff. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> Nothing. It's weird. I thought I was value betting when I bet the turn 40 something, too. But then when I was calling, I was like six. I was like, wow, why did I step into this? Call him Brick Solomon, 0 for 3, and now he's stuck 100 grand. See if he can rally when we come back on the big game. To see behind the scenes interviews, all this game's stats, unaired hands, and material deemed too hot for TV, visit us online. But right now, it's time for my favorite segment, the couch cannon hand. I'm in my couch and ready to go. This is where you get to experience what it's like under the gun and in the hot seat from the eyes of our loose cannon. And the action is going to start on G this time. So literally, the couch cannon is under the gun. Good description. With pocket queens. OK, raise. 16. Raises to 1,600. That's a little big, but at this point, it's become her standard raise. Action folds to Phil Locke. I'm going to string call, actually. I don't, I don't Calls. Even... There we go. People are going to be pretty loose against the loose cannon. Not too worried yet. Bryn Kenny. I'll just string raise. Kenny raises to 5,400. Now, Courtney can't let that get her down. These guys are very capable of just messing with her and each other. Lou folds. I'm pot. Solomon raises the pot to 20,200. OK, this doesn't bode quite as well, but last time Rick potted it, he had two eights. Courtney can't really like it since four bets are typically so powerful, especially knowing these guys know how tight she's been playing. But as the cannon, you're here for 150 hands, and I don't think you can fold two queens to guys who play this loose. Especially with Rick's short stack, Courtney has one move, and that move is pot. So a huge decision for the cannon.
Pot. She repots it. Yes, you can, girl. You deserve this money. Just idiots. You know? <laughs> look at look at this. Why can't they just all limp and I can just do my job? Lock you know? folds. Oops. Brian Kenny's out. Courtney's made the optimal play. It's now heads up and very unlikely she's behind. She's probably racing at worst. You got more than he does. All right. Solomon's all in. He's in. Are you in? Yeah. Yeah, call. This would be a good time to get aces, I was thinking. Uh, I have queens. So what's Solomon got? A couple of tens. Yeah, she got me, Chris. Courtney's in great shape to bust them. Queens against tens. How many boards, guys? One time. One time. Solomon's in the one, one time. time mode. Okay. Big up for some real money I hope. to buy board games. <laughs> what else are you going to do with this money if you win it? I want to play live tournament. Oh, all right. So you can become a pro. Pro in the making, as long as we don't see a 10. And you can still win the 50K package if you are the highest winner. I mean, I know, I got to double right. up after this, though. Yeah, yeah, still got work to do. You got lots. Yeah, you got to win a well, lot still of money. Well, still, still I have to win the 10. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, wrong time to be lucky. Remember, you said good luck to me, too. I, I, no, I don't know. You win, you win. You win. You win. You win. <laughs> He was pretty unlucky in that last tense. Maybe he's I due. love how he does it one time. Don't you know? tell me that. <laughs> I'm not going to have any effect on what comes. Just on your state of yeah. just on your, <laughs> your emotional state. Courtney's thinking about that NAPT passport and a potential professional poker career. Rick Solomon says he's feeling lucky. We'll see all five cards. Here comes the flop. Here we go. Seven, eight, nine. Four, three, ten, and Rick makes a set. That's such a gross flop for Courtney. I need a queen. We need a queen. The good news is that Courtney has recovered. Even if she loses this hand, she will not be going home. It's such a terrible flop for Courtney. No backdoor draws at all. Queen and only a queen will do it for her. How much are we going to have left? Like 35? Well, he's got about 50-ish, so you'll have still some. If we don't hit a queen. Courtney will be left with 41,400. You want to run it three times now? Who would have thought? Okay, let's run it three times. Three, three times. times. It's the emotional okay. thing. Times. It's the right card, and especially when you hit on the second run. This is an incredibly nice gesture by Rick Solomon, giving Courtney a chance to win some of her money back. Okay. You only get beat if the queen comes in the front one. It's going to hurt. Got but... queen There's no, <laughs> no back doors, nothing. Here comes the queen ball. Boom. Seven of spades on the turn. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, and then you're on a free roll. You're on the free roll if this blanks off. Yeah. You're really in pain if a queen rolls off. <laughs> It's weird how I don't want a queen to come now. You don't want a queen? <laughs> it's weird now. Oh, you don't want a queen. She doesn't want to win this one because she's going to feel, uh, I get it. <laughs> That's not the attitude. You want the queen whenever it can come. It's good for you. Just River, six of spades. Solomon's going to get a third of the pot. Thanks to Rick's incredible generosity, G gets two more shots at it. You know, it's really pretty brutal for Courtney. She played tight all week long, got her money in great, and this is what she's up against. That guy. <laughs> Bad plays and controversy, story of my life. <laughs> Bad plays and controversy, story of his life. Don't forget getting incredibly lucky. Oh, you made some good man. moves. You've done all right. Yeah. You're a good-hearted kid. People love you. Yeah, that's the bottom line. All right. I agree. Thank you. I agree. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> He's clearly done everything he can to try to keep Courtney in the game. I agree as well. Turn number two, six of diamonds. No help to Courtney. Courtney's still got three shots to hit one of two queens. I'll take one queen now and then one queen on the turn. There's Again, the thinking. That's, there's nothing wrong with thinking big. River, ace. Right. So we got one more opportunity. Solomon now guaranteed two-thirds of the pot. Scott, do you think she's hoping for Bohemian Rhapsody or My Bicycle? Certainly feeling under pressure at the moment. <laughs> Cannon down to her last two chances. Here's turn number three, ace of diamonds. What's with all these aces? Need some queens. One card to go. Can the dealer find a queen? River number three. Ace of hearts and Courtney will get nothing here. Okay, not dead yet though. Not dead. Luckily he didn't buy in for more. Great showing, sticks it in horrible against the cannon. <laughs> well done. Uh, sorry. Oh, such a sick feeling. She played super tight all week, got the action she wanted with a big hand and the poker gods favored the already millionaire. Brutal. Okay, come back, Trail. That was exciting. Those were some catty ladies.
Courtney G is now down to 41 grand with 76 hands left to play. Can she turn things around and walk away with a profit? Find out when we come back. Welcome back to Las Vegas, where big game regulars Phil Locke and Daniel Negrano were the big winners so far. Locke up 104,000 and Daniel Negrano up over 92K. Everyone else at the table is in the hole. Bryn Kenny is down just 16K, while Rick Solomon is now down 28,600 after delivering that vicious suck out to our loose cannon. Courtney G leaving her stuck over $58,000, while the fastest clicker in the West, Randy Liu, is stuck almost 93K. Alongside Joe Stapleton, I'm Scott Huff, and now that we've seen roughly half the hands this week, it's time to check in on the stats and get an overview on how everyone is playing. Well, Scott, the first thing that jumps out at me, other than the fact that your shirt's the exact same color as Bryn Kenny's, is the amount of three bets we've seen so far. Randy Liu, Nano No Fold, is playing super aggressive pre-flop. He's three betting a little over one out of every four opportunities. At 26.5%, that's almost twice as much as amateur Rick Solomon, who somehow usually plays higher than this, and three times as much as Bryn, who ranks third with 7.9%. Phil Locke has rarely three bet, while Daniel has yet to give us the old pre-flop repop. He and our loose cannon are, in fact, sharing that bagel. All right, what else have you noticed about the way Courtney G has been playing so far? Well, Scott, Courtney has folded every single time she's been re-raised pre-flop. She's last in VPIP, only voluntarily putting her chips in play 12.2% of the time. Good job, whoever invented blinds and annies. She's also least likely to call pre-flop raises at all, so it's not surprising Courtney is last in flop scene and total pots won. I think it's safe to say our cannon style thus far is unfortunately weak passive. In layman's terms, she's been folding more than the overnight crew at the Banana Republic. <laughs> Well, we have to give her some credit. She did get her money in very good with Queens, only to have them cracked against Rick Solomon's 10s. Yeah, she got me, Chris. Queens against 10s. Uh -oh. Told you. OK, not dead yet, though. Courtney G gave tight a try and ran bad. Now she'll have to switch gears to have any hope of walking away a winner. Hopefully, she can adjust her game. Now, Joe, two players whose strategies do seem to be working so far are our big winners, Daniel Negrano and Phil Locke. Yep, as you can see, Daniel's playing 27% of pots, while Phil Locke is playing a whopping 47%. For those who aren't so good at math, that's almost half. This duo is also ranked one and two at the table in calling preflop raises. They're also two of the least likely to fold to a three bet preflop. Daniel and Phil are persistently stubborn, and they've stationed their way to profit. Locke is up the most at 104,000, and Daniel is up over 92K. So it's not exactly a coincidence that two of the biggest names in the game are the big winners so far, but it is a coincidence that they both have highlights. It'll be exciting to see how all the players approach the second half of our session, especially our loose cannon. You know, Scott, you could probably use a little frosted tip or something. You do your hair, I'll do mine. Let's right, get back let's... to the game. <laughs> Cards are in the air now, and Rick Solomon is first to act. No love on the highlights? Then I'd look exactly like Lance Bass. Do say it for Solomon. <laughs> Fultz. The cannon, Courtney G, ace-jack suited. Ace-jack for the comeback. 16. Raises to 1,600. Ace-queen for Daniel. Oh, well, this is not Courtney's day. Uh, yeah, but it's whatever. Like it. Yeah, you like it. Yeah, you like it, too. Make it five. It's respect. Yeah. Make it five. Daniel re-raises to 5,000. Action folds to Nanonoko, who's out. Action back on G. I'll call. It calls. Even though she's short and out of position, this is a fine call with a big suited ace. She'll be heads up with Daniel to the flop. Five, seven, four, two hearts. Check. Courtney checks. Daniel's still best. If Daniel bets, there's no shame in check folding this flop. And Daniel checks. To the turn. Nine of clubs. I check. G checks again. Daniel still checks his ace high. Rivers the six of diamonds. Check. G checks. Check's good. And Daniel checks it down. Me too. Just by nose. Oh, yeah, that'll make her feel better. The old pip. Good thing no ace game. Yeah, that would have been bad for you. <laughs> Not as bad as getting queens cracked. If an ace had hit, it could have been the end of our cannon, Courtney G. She's still alive, but she's running out of time. See what happens next when we come back. Welcome back to the big game where amateur loose cannon Courtney G might be getting to desperation time. Less than half the hands left, and she's down to $34,000. Looks down at king five. Folds. 
Daniel Negrano, King Queen offsuit. Bumps it to 1200. Phil lock out. Bryn Kenny with Jack Seven suited. Bryn likes to play on the button. Well, I guess I'm gonna have to owe you one here. So yeah. we got about <laughs> we got a lot more hands. We got, we got a lot more. Bryn's made it 4,000, and actions fold around to Solomon who folds. Yeah, was, I'm in the hole, but yeah. You, um, what I've noticed is you like to play from the button a lot. Is that a? Well, here it is. Yeah. So I'm gonna, based on that, I think you have a lot more hands than normal. So I'm gonna call you. Yeah. With a pretty bad hand. That's nice. <laughs> Me too. That's good. That's positive EV for you, kid. You can neural that something. I, wa I wonder whose is worse. Well, my hand or yours? Ace four ten two spades. Well, that ace is, is something that you do that with a lot. It's a kind of scary card, I guess. Kind of an ace is something I might have in my hand. Yeah, you could. If I check, you're gonna bet probably. Should, I guess. Most flops. But if you have an issue, I'm going to check and see if you check. And then maybe I'll take a free card. Daniel checks. The turn and see what I catch then. You're not going to uh, check. You probably no, wouldn't no, check. No free card. Often. Daniel bluffed Bryn hard on the first hand of the night. I just want to say really quickly that it's funny how, like, after, you know, big pot, run it three times. Yeah. I won them all. Big pot, run it three times. Courtney wins them all. Then you could feel almost the energy was in a dead calm for a while. Yeah. And then. It's nice that it's been lifted again, and it's back to the band. They're playing like a 40K pot, and they're talking. And stuff. I love it. I mean, except for her. I feel bad because, you know, her energy know, went way down. I wanted to win one so bad. I wanted to win the yeah. second, too. That would have been huge. I really and hope she doubles. Yeah, me too. You're going to bet here about 83% of the time. Yeah? I think. So let's bet 8,300, then. Kenny's going to bet 8,300 with his flush draw. Bryn looking for a little Jaws 4 action right now. 83, that's a large-ish bet. Bryn's got a pretty strong draw and a lot of equity in this pot. Although Daniel does have the best hand. Small bet. It's not. It's not a small Compared bet. Compared to your 78. My question is, are you going to try a three-barrel bluff in this hand? Well, I learned from you from the last hand, so. So I guess if I'm smart and I had like a really good hand, I should let you try and not raise you or anything stupid like that. Yeah, that would probably be true. OK, so on that note, this is fun. Right? We can commentate on our own hands. Hey, hey. I'm learning a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I won't raise you because if I did that, you can't three barrel bluff me, right? Yeah, and then all my bad hands that I have, I mean, what am I going to do with those? Okay, cool. Call then. Negrano calls. See what comes. And I'm going to check no matter what comes. Check. Check in the dark. Three of spades. It's a blank. Don't worry about it's it. It's not a blank. <laughs> no, it's not. Kenny's made his flush. I can see out of the corner of my eye that it wasn't a blank. It might have been a blank check from you to Bryn Kenny. Let's see, that was 83 on yep. the turn. What percentage of the time would you say I'd bet here? Oh, a lot less. A lot less. Here, you're, you're only betting like 54% now, because it's kind of a dangerous card. But yeah. you do that with your whole, like about 54%. But you're deep enough where you could bet fold still. So maybe yeah, a little higher. So we could bet like 17,800. That's probably a good size. Considering I've never the pot. seen this in my life. <laughs> considering uh, the size of the pot, 17, the 17, how much? 17,800. Daniel does have a shot of catching another spade. Got to try some way to win the pot. Right. The th well, so I'm, again, I'm focusing on you getting get me back a three-barrel bluff. So on that note, it'd be stupid to raise you at any point, I think. Unless I mean, check raise the river, but that's probably not going to happen. Uh, so I think the best play to go with plan A, because plan A worked against him. Yep. Remember earlier? I saw that. So how much is that? I know what plan A is. 17.8. OK. I'm going to stick with plan A for now. There's the 17, there's the 8. He calls. When in doubt. Still on plan A, huh? And still. Daniel calls. Checking in the dark, because that's wow, part of the plan. Oh. Yeah, checking in the dark. River 10 of diamonds, no help to Daniel. What came? Anything good? Ten of diamonds. Was it the Jack of Spades? It was not the Jack of Spades. Oh, man, I wanted that one. That would have been good. Tough for that card to come out. Let's see. <laughs> it's a sick, sick river card, huh? What was it? Ten of diamonds. Ooh. How am I going to have a ten here? What do you got here? What do I have in my hand, or what do I have in chips? No, no, no. You have more than me, so let's see. I'm going to bet. With all Daniels talking, I'm sure Bryn thinks he has the best hand. And he's right. For sure. 48,400. Oh, I hope you're three-barrel bluffing, because this will be so cool. This would be great if he gets me back right away, right? 
What do I do here with Ace King? Not that I have it, just saying. <laughs> <laughs> this is the best hand I've watched in a million years. Not that I have that. I don't even know what I said. I don't remember either. What is it? That's what I thought. 48-4. We both forgot at the same time, Bryn. I'm attached to the script, you know? I like it. 48-4, <laughs> okay. This would be what they call a um, <laughs> hero call. But I'm not that much of a hero here, I don't think. This is too much. I, I'll say you've got king high. Yeah, I guess I have to fold. Good hand. Daniel lays it down. No, no bluffs? Hmm. Show a bluff. I'll show you one card. Seven? Oh, wow. That was probably a bluff then. Unless he had a flush. Ding. I had king high, so I didn't really have. That was nice. <laughs> it was nice. <laughs> it was nice for you. But I had king high with some outs, you know? A oh. couple outs in the turn. That was the most magical hand flow and experience. <laughs> Enjoy yourself. Was, and I didn't know what you guys had, and I really enjoyed it. <laughs> Made my job easier, and I'm sure Bryn enjoyed it too. Apparently, revenge is a dish best served with a real hand. Kenny drags a pot worth over 109,000. Will he and Daniel continue to butt heads? Find out when we come back. Welcome back to the big game where earlier tonight, Daniel Negrano pulled off a big bluff against Bryn Kenny. What was Daniel thinking? Find out now as we go behind the poker face. Well, at this point in the game, I've been playing pretty solid and hadn't shown a bluff at all. And Rick Solomon was doing a lot of funky straddling in weird positions for really weird amounts. So he does a sleepy straddle for 2,000. I'm on the button, and I want to play a lot of hands on the button. I think it's obviously the best spot at the table. And although I only have queen three offsuit, I figure Ray's here is going to get a lot of credit. I don't think Phil Locke and Bryn Kenny or Randy Lou really want to play a lot of hands out of position. So I make it 4,000, totally expecting to get heads up with Rick Solomon. To my surprise, Bryn Kenny calls, and of course Solomon does as well. I have nothing, queen three. The flop comes, four, five, five. Both players check to me. And earlier in the session, I bet the flop in the same kind of situation, and Bryn check raised me. So I thought, if I did it again, he'd probably give me a little more credit this time because he wouldn't think I'd do it again. He'd think maybe I'd just give up. So I went ahead and bet the flop. I bet 6,000. Bryn Kenny called. That led me to believe he's somewhere around a middle pair, maybe like a decent ace. But I knew he obviously had queen high beat. Rick folds. Now the turn card comes in eight and Bryn Kenny checks. I felt like he doesn't have that strong a hand. He's got some sort of marginal hand. And if I make a good size bet here, there's no reason why he shouldn't think I have trips, a straight, maybe even a full house already. So I go ahead and I bet 16,000 on the turn. Now Bryn calls. When he calls me, I think, hmm, he probably has something like pocket sevens and the eight's giving him an extra out in that he can catch a six for straight, maybe a seven for full house. Now the river card is a deuce, a complete blank, and he checks again. I know queen three is no good but I also don't think that he's got that big of a hand. And I feel like if I make a bet of 25,000 or 26,000, he's gonna call me too often thinking that I'm bluffing. So I thought, why not do what's called polarizing my range, making it look like I'm on a complete bluff or that I'm looking to get paid. And I way over bet the pot. I went ahead and bet 85,000, figuring that he's not gonna wanna look stupid calling off such a big bet with just a pair of sevens, because that's kind of what I thought he had. I still don't know what he had, but that was my read. So yeah, basically the way over bet there, to me, I'm, th I'm trying to convince him that I've got this really big hand and put him on something strong, and that he's gonna call big, but the truth is, I just figured a really big bet was gonna get him off a marginal hand. Bryn eventually folded the winner, ace-queen high to Daniel's river bet. Tough to make the hero call on TV, even tougher to be right. Rick Solomon is straddled once again. Love that action, and the cannon will be first to act with Deuce Tray of Diamonds. Let's it go. Daniel with King Deuce. Folds as well. Phil Locke, hockey sticks. Looks like he's limping. I guess they're walking sticks. <laughs> action over to Bryn Kenny, ace queen. Sorry. Here. Raises to 3,200. Kenny wants the lead while he's out of position. Lou quickly folds. 9 5 for Solomon. He's out. Well, at least you're breaking stride. You, know, you didn't wait for it to be here, this thing. You're just doing it. I hate getting raised by smart people. He never complains when I raise him. <laughs> oh. All right, I'm going to look them. <laughs> and Locke calls. So it's Locke and Kenny to the flop. These two are racing. It'll be a coin flip if we see all five cards. 
Locks in position. Kenny's got the betting lead. Six, four, five. Phil with a pair and now up and down. It's not on me, kid. I'm just waiting. Oh. <laughs> Don't worry, I know that. Do you? We'll bet 4,500. Ah, Bryn and Posse. <laughs> Leads out 4,500. Phil should like his hand. Lock calls. I'm trying to volume up. Phil going for the smaller chips to have a more impressive stack. Turns the four of spades. Kenny checks. Bryn's a lot less aggressive out of position. And so does Phil. To the river. Jack of diamonds. Phil's still best here. Bryn's already given up the lead. Tough to bluff this river. He doesn't. Phil should be pretty confident, especially with Bryn checking two streets. It's funny. I don't think I can get any value from my hand. I think you're going to fold all the hands uh, that I'm beating, and, and you're going to call the decent amount of hands far, that beat me. No you're never folding eights. You're never folding tens. The, uh, if you made king jack, you're, you're never this. folding. If you have twos, you're going to fold. Ace queen, you're folding. I'm like right in the middle, kid. I check. I'm in the middle of all that stuff. I check. Yeah, I have a pair. I have ace eye. Oh, OK, right in the middle. Yeah. All yours. Nice breakdown, Phil. Woo! Wow, I beat you out of a pot. All you do is beat me. I finally got you. Basically, that's Phil's way of saying, I hate you, Kenny. <laughs> so 24-year-old Bryn Kenny loses that pot worth over 17 grand to veteran pro Phil Locke. And as the Unabomber reels in that cash, let's take a look to see where everyone's at so far. Locke is now up over 111 grand. Daniel Negrano showing a nice profit. He's up 67 dimes. Kenny's doing all right, up about 10K, while Solomon is down 27 grand, but was stuck for 100K earlier tonight. Lou is down 92 grand, but the big story is that Arcanon is down over 68 grand with time running out. All right, guys, that's it for the night. Courtney, do you feel like you can turn it around? I think it's going to be an exciting next show. I think <laughs> it is going to be an exciting Very next show. Exciting. Daniel, you're known as the Cannon Killer. You don't have your sights set on her, right? Uh, you want the truth? Yes. Yes, I do. Absolutely. No! Look at this. It's, it's, you know, I mean, it's nothing personal. She seems cool and everything She's like that. She's sweet. But I, I want, want her to double through you then. I want them chips. Fine, fair enough. If that happens, I'd be okay with it. All right, guys, that's it. I'm Amanda Leatherman saying goodbye for now. And remember, if you've got the cash and the guts, there's always a seat open at the big game. Good night, everybody. For Joe Stapleton, I'm Scott Hub. We'll see you next time on the big game. Who do, who do you um, want to bust the most? Bust the most. Yeah. I just want to play some anyone. fun pots, me and Daniel. Ah, uh, it's always it. Daniel. You just want to go head up with me? We can just play head up online, cuz. What? <laughs> what? Bring it. Yeah, well, we're going we're gonna to throw down. We're going to get it in. Yeah, All the way in? Everything? Well, sooner That's pretty likely. He's three betting me with Jack Seven, all this kind of weird stuff. He's, he's, he's got to come into him with that, with that craziness. I like it coming to me. <laughs>